My name is John Canning. I'm one of the principals of the John Canning Painting and Conservation Studios based here in Cheshire, Connecticut. Our studio was founded in 1976. During the last 30 odd years, we've had the good fortune and privilege to have worked in some of America's finest historic buildings and interiors, including many state capitol buildings, uh, our nation's capitol building in Washington, D.C., the Treasury Department, the Eisenhower Executive Office Building, many other public buildings like museums and libraries and of course theatres such as Radio City Music Hall and churches for example the H.H. H. Richardson and John Lafarge Trinity Church in Boston and of course even a train station where we restored the Sky Mural at the Grand Central Station in Manhattan. My name is John Trusino. I'm an architect with Kling Stubbins in Philadelphia. And the project that I'm working on currently is the restoration of the ballroom at the Academy of Music in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Right, the Academy of Music is a historic landmark. Um, it received its status in the early 60s. The building is 153, 154 years old. It opened in 1857. Our bid package included um, a portion of work that was a design work as well as just the actual execution of the work. We, we searched for a, a number of um, probably weeks trying to, trying to determine whom we should hire and partner with at the very beginning to, to um, orchestrate a paint study of the room and to try and discover if it was possible to unearth what, how the room was originally painted. The John Canning Studios was hired by the architectural firm of Klein Steubens to conduct a study to determine the original palette of the paint colors and the artwork as it was first presented to the public in 1857. The restoration study consisted of three steps. First, there was archival research, which was done mostly by Klein students. Second, there was the in-the-field investigation. And third, there was the uh, scientific analysis. We found one photograph in the archives from the 1860s. It illustrated um, sort of the decoration of the room and the way in which the room was assembled. It had clearly been painted um, fairly consistently on like a two to three year basis from its very beginning. We could tell that through just very cursory examinations of the millwork and the moldings, which had been painted so often that all of their definition and detail had, had, was gone. It was blurred by just layers and layers of paint. These exposures uh, and in many cases were just ghostings of the original artwork and we were successful in exposing this artwork. These uh, samples were documented from the areas they came from and they were sent to Richard Wolbers at the winter tour at the University of Delaware. Richard microscopically cross-section analyzed these samples and he was able to identify the original paint and the original colors. A report of the study was compiled and sent to John Trusino for his review. Um, once the paint study was completed, um, we, we actually made the study part of the bidding set of documents that we produced to try and figure out who we were going to hire to recreate the patterning within the room. And we were the successful bidder on that. However, that was not just the end of the story. We went through a series of interviews uh, with the architectural firm. Uh, to establish what our approach would be and do, uh, what our philosophies were. Our approach to uh, replication, historic uh, decoration and artwork is to try and use the original methods of execution. Uh, that is to say, the methods that was used by the craftsmen and the artists in the past. And that is our goal to do that. We don't try to reinvent the wheel or come up with any modern electronic gadgets that will take place of the craftsman's hand. And I think that is where our studio is unique. Uh, during this mock-up, there, there was discussions 
about the subtleties and nuances of the colors. Uh, for example, uh, how an artificial painted shadow, how strong it should be uh, compared with a natural shadow created by the new lighting system. During the restoration uh, of the ballroom, the John Canning Studios was responsible for casting and running the ornamental plaster work and moldings for the repair of the entablature. Uh, we were also responsible for the paint removal and of course we were responsible for the wall preparation and eventually recreating and reinstating the, a copy of the original artwork of 1857. But there was two types of, uh, or two styles of painting involved. Uh, there was trompe l'oeil work and there was grisaille work. Trompe l'oeil work is the art of visual deception whereby a molding is painted in two dimension to give the illusion that it's three dimensional uh, replete with highlights and artificial shadows. Grisaille work is uh, the art of painting in monotone to imitate bas relief, such as the four busts of the composers, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Haydn. Um, part of the work that needed to be done was the finalization of the design. There, there was discussions about the subtleties and nuances of the colors. Uh, for example, uh, how an artificial painted shadow, how strong it should be, uh, uh, compared with a natural shadow created by the new lighting system. Uh, this was a very creative and a productive exercise and it was a pleasure working with John because of his uh, understanding of these nuances and his an incredible color sense. We knew where the patterns repeated and we, we knew where, what the variation was. So we had you know, shapes of wall space coded back to the, pho the photograph that we had and we had a sense whether these seven were figurative these seven were just floral, a floral motif, motif that just repeated, you know, this was really architectural trim. The archival black and white photograph indicated that there were some kind of a scenes painted in the tippinums above the doors. In our field investigation, we could not find any such evidence. Um, so therefore, new scenes had to be created. Uh, John Trusino, in consultation with his clients, came up with the subject matter, which was Mozart's seven operas. We then created uh, scenes of, of the operas and painted them on canvas here in our studios. Towards the end of the completion of the restoration, we installed them in the tippinums above the doors. There are four oculuses in the lower vault. Um, which originally were to have just a floral element in them. But as I continued to look at the photograph and zoom into it, I was sure what I was seeing were actually the heads of people within them. And so as we looked at it, and then finally John sort of agreed, some of his painters looked at it as well, and they thought that they were heads as well. And so with the introduction of um, these sort of portrait-like heads within these oculuses, it's really transformed the decoration, made it hundred times better, more interesting, and it's actually tied back to what this facility is, which is a performing arts um, building. The fact that we, you know, the, the drawings are of composers that would have been famous by the time this building was, was constructed um, has meaning to the orchestra and to the building. It, there was one conjectural area where we had some fun. Uh, again, an absence of infield uh, evidence of the features of the two putties at either end of the ballroom. Uh, we used as models my two youngest grandchildren, uh, Georgia and Jamie. When it comes a day when we walk in that room and the carpet, the chandeliers, everything is where it should be, and most importantly, perhaps maybe we'll see people dancing in the ballroom because then it will truly be functioning as it was originally designed to be. I really have to refer back to this black and white photograph that turned up in our archival research. Uh, not only was it used as a reference for every aspect of our work, but at the end of the day, it was a testimony as to the accuracy of our replication 